you know, what other movies could you potentially have like a like a whole day dedicated to just that movie? Like, where's like Fry Green Tomatoes Day? You know, what other movies? Go. Could- <laughs> or you know, uh, Echo Day type of thing. Is there a movie Echo, called Echo? Echo, I, Echo. I know there's a video game called day, Echo, but day, I mean, day, day. Yeah, like what other movies could we do a, a entire day? Let's talk about that here in a bit. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night, not 9.30 Central Time. It is uh, a little after 8 p.m. Central Time. We're doing the tagline early. We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I'm confused, Chris Adams. As to why we're going early? I'm so confused. It's so early. What's happening? We'll cover why it's early here in a little bit, but how are y'all doing tonight? How's everyone doing out there in internet world? Happy May the 4th be with y'all. Happy May the 4th, Chris. Happy May the 4th. Thank you. I just uh, want to highlight Garth's comment yeah. there. <laughs> Arbor Day is Groot Day. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I know uh, I know. there's uh, uh, April 26th is Alien Day uh, in a nod to the planet that they go on in Aliens. And I guess it is also the same planet in Alien that the ship has crashed on. That's uh, LV-426. So... Yeah, I can't wait for alien for me to get alien and predator questions in the first class league because I'm gonna nail the heck out of those. I mean, <laughs> no, he's not strong at those at all. Oh, I'm not. That, that, that's a weakness. Alien predator movies. Psh, that's for nerds to watch. He's, I'm not gonna know those. He's never seen a single one of those predalien movies. Predalien movies. I wish I didn't see the movie that had the predalien in it. <laughs> Uh, no, that, that one's not true there, Garth. That's that's not true. No, um, it's Home Alone Day. <laughs> is there going to be photography cinema after seminar after with coffee service? Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't need coffee right before going to bed later on tonight. So I love that you highlighted that comment, not knowing a dang thing about what he's talking about. Yeah, no, that's one of those like uh, you really need to read the comment before you highlight them because who knows where that that sentence t- can go, especially if I didn't read it before. So. Wait, you haven't been reading the comments before highlighting them? I mean, I'm skimming them for like naughty words or maybe potentially topics well, that we don't want to talk about. But I mean, yeah, since since you went ahead and brought up Vernon's uh, comment there, we'll get those uh, funny little plugs that we usually do at the top of the show out of the way real quick. I'm on well, Twitch, first, guys. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm on Twitch. Yeah, don't cut me off this time. You cut me off last time I tried to promote my Twitch, you dang fool. Uh, Vernon is uh, making a comment that he commented on earlier on my Twitch stream that I was on today. So, guys, if you want to join me on my Twitch stream and come support me, that'd be just ducky. It's twitch.tv slash chrisadamsnlp, for those of you who need to know. It's very easy. (laughs) Shut up, Jake! (laughs) <laughs> Love what Jake, Jake pops in here with just the the hard the hard punch sentence and then gets out type of thing. Oh geez, um, Chris Adams is not allowed to plug on other streams. Yeah, that's gonna be funny. Uh, we can probably talk a little bit more about that if you would like here in a little bit. But uh, at the top of the show, of course, we do like to mention that hey, folks. Streamlabs is open. Streamlabs.com slash Cinefanatics. Uh, unlike the one that. Uh, that my brother has on his Twitch, which goes directly to him. This one is going directly to us, which in turn is pretty much just going directly to him right now. So <laughs> anyways, if y'all want to help us out or help him out, streamlabs.com slash Uh, If you have any questions, comments, any input y'all want to have, feel free to do it over there. Of course, we also have patreon.com slash Cinefanatics. Hop on the tier that's right for you. Uh, we will have more movie watch alongs and trivia scrimmage nights coming up pretty soon. We'll be making announcements of that uh, probably on a future tagline or on Twitter. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Cinefanatics MLP. Anyways, right, Jake, you don't, you don't have to shut up now, Jake. You, you, you're good. You can, you can say as much <laughs> as you want. Thank you, Jake. Oh, geez. So um, let me see. What else do we got real quick? Uh, let's go with the, uh, how much was that chair you just bought? This chair was like a hundred and sixty, I think. 
So at least double that. Yeah, because I need to, if, if I'm gonna ruin a chair, I need to be able to make a profit off of it. Yeah. So at least at least uh you know Let's go four hundred. I would, um, I, I would, I would like a two hundred percent margin on this chair. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, that's what you I mean. asked. You asked. <laughs> um, so upcoming shows. Uh, okay, so I'll do the first one right off the bat. Uh, the reason that we are early tonight is because one, I had today off, which is great for planning and getting stuff done. Um. Uh, some of that we will cover here in a little bit when we get into personal stuff, how we're doing this week and how we're going to be doing next week and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but because I was able to better plan, uh, it was time for us to move this up early so I could participate in something else that I really enjoy. And that would be Video Drew's uh, channel where they're, they're doing cinema bias with Alex Mack over there. We'll be covering Halloween 3, Season of the Witch tonight. Uh, you know that great Star Wars movie, Halloween 3. Oh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> this is... This is actually probably one of probably my favorite of all the Halloween movies, just because I, I'm not a huge Michael Myers fan, but uh, I love the zany direction that Halloween three took. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking about Halloween three over there. So that's going to be at 10 o'clock central time tonight. So that puts it at eight Pacific 11 Eastern. After you're done watching us here on tagline, feel free to hop over to video Drew's uh, channel and watch us over there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Watch you. Watch uh, us as far as me, Video Drew, and Alex. Yeah. I got it. I'm and, catching and, what you're throwing. And Lola might pop up because she's just been she's about to come popping up high. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I added, anyway. I added a, a new light to my room, and now it's casting her shadow on the wall back there, so it's really funny looking. Now she actually has something to stare at when she looks at the wall. Yeah. Her shadow. Her, her own shadow. Who is that? Gorgeous looking shadowy cat figure on the wall. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, what do you got coming up? What do I have coming up? I've got a bunch of stuff coming up. Well, besides the fact that I, I'm on twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP again. <laughs> He's going to plug that like every five minutes on the show tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that actually be pretty yep. funny. <laughs> I definitely should. I definitely should. Um, We've got... Some stuff. Okay, so here's the thing. You guys know that we did WandaVision. We did Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We broke down those shows. We did the breakdowns. What what have you. However we do the things. Here. We, we, we did those. We did both those shows. That was a bunch of redundancy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jake in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. <laughs> well, there you go. If y'all want to go ahead and follow over at twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP, I am getting closer to 50 and I need that in order to get affiliated and start making money from that. Uh, yeah. From Twitch, the Twitch platform itself, not from Streamlabs. Anyway, back on track. We broke down one division. We broke down Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You think we're just doing Marvel shows? No, we're breaking down Star Wars shows also that happen over on Disney Plus. One of which is going to be happening this Friday because Bad Batch just started literally today and there's going to be another episode friday and we're going to break them down both me and guest host adam witt and that's because my brother hasn't watched clone war so he's not caught up on who the bad batch are and all that stuff but adam witt knows star wars you can tell by his wonderful uh his 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 chiclet badges there from 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 from, from star wars uh anyway <laughs> where's 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 baby yoda in there would you stop? I got it. <laughs> Where's Baby Yoda? There was no Baby Yoda in that picture. I'm missing Grogu. Mm -hmm. Grogu is not in the Bad Batch. It's, I mean, he's well. Technically, he's alive during that time. So if he well, shows up, he, I mean, he he theoretically could show up. He'd just be a really, really smaller Grogu. And there's the other reason why I'm not watching it. Yeah, exactly. Either no, way, though, guys, no Grogu, we're gonna be, no no watching. Hush. We're gonna be breaking that down this Friday. Uh, tentatively because apparently there is a, uh, a a big schmodown throwdown deal that's happening this friday also tentatively going to be around see if i get my times right eight pacific 10 central 11 eastern you that's did it. roughly about where it should end up being 
Uh, so right now it is definitely me and Adam. There might be a third person joining us. I am still waiting to hear back. So you maybe just show up and find out if it's just me and Adam or not come Friday. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And, uh, that, yeah, I've been trying for quite a while since we started, honestly. I'm the one who was born first. Isn't it me trying to replace him? No. I mean, I'm the I'm the older brother. Your your age in relation to me has nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> make Adam Wit a permanent Cinefanatics member. Call him Adam's Wit. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> good job, Garth. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, so that will eventually run into us doing a uh, uh, our breakdowns of Loki, which that's going to be oh, coming yeah. up pretty soon. So we'll figure out how that how we're going to do that dance with those two shows. But yeah, eventually. Um, it, yes, that is going to be going on Friday. Yep. So <laughs> Adam's number one is now the cat. <laughs> I like what like, Garth said, that I'm the newer, better model. Do you okay? Uh, anyways, uh, what's been going on with you lately? Well, I mean, so have you, start, have you started anything new, any new ventures in your life? Anything that you want to, yeah, I've started a few things. Um, <laughs> I'm over on Twitch now. Cool. Uh, so let me l let me piggyback off that and uh, let me tell me, tell the good people I found a new hobby a new thing that I absolutely love and I'll call it I don't know I I'll call it trolling my brother while he's on Twitch it is so much fun y'all tro trolling me while I'm on what on Twitch yeah, yeah. Twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP <laughs> yep. oh, y'all let sorry. us know if y'all. Oh, oh, yeah, it's Garth, that one. Okay, Garth knows too. Yeah, y'all, y'all let us know if this is gonna get dead. But I think this is like better than like you know YouTube popping up like commercials of like hey you Streamyard, which is what I see a lot. And I'm like I'm already giving money to Streamyard. Why am I still seeing ads for it? Exactly. <laughs> or you know whatever other ads YouTube decides to show you like Audible or like whatever those pills are that make stuff bigger. I don't know. Blue Chew. Sure. Uh, anyways, uh, personal for me, uh, guys, I'll be starting, I've mentioned this before. I'll be starting a new position at my job, uh, completely at a different location. It's going to give me a set schedule. So I will know what days I'm off and I can plan things ahead. Uh, by doing that, that will put me back into the position where I can go back to working on ranking videos again. So, uh, stay tuned. You will see the return of ranking videos, uh, probably by the end of this month is what I'm going to shoot for. But if I don't make it, it'll be sometime in June. So, uh, that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is next week. Next week's going to be a bit of a shuffle on stuff. Uh, cause the city of Austin will be hosting quite possibly the greatest landmark to ever exist in the span of one week. And that will be a pop-up restaurant called Moobies. I was confused for a minute. I was like, hey, wait, what? <laughs> We're going to have something any cool? Of you, any of y'all that are familiar with the Kevin Smith movies, like I'm familiar with Kevin Smith movies, uh, will know what Moobies is. It's a fast mm -hmm. food restaurant. It's kind of supposed to be making fun of McDonald's and Burger King and whatnot. Uh, they're doing a pop-up here in Austin, Texas. They're actually doing the pop-up at... Uh, the Austin City Limits Moody Theater, which is where the TV show Austin City Limits is filmed. So that's all kinds of cool. Uh, I've been there a couple of times. I think you've been there like once or twice also, right? The, the Moody Theater. Oh, yeah. No, we went and saw Conan there. That's right. Um, the Barbarian, not, not O'Brien. Uh, anyways, so yeah, we're going to be doing that next week. Uh, I know we're going to have... Uh, maybe some special guests joining us for that. I don't know if we're going to film anything for it. I'm kind of thinking of potentially doing a vlog. Maybe might be fun. Vlog. Yeah. Um, the question is, are we doing a tagline next week? Yeah. So either we're going to do something really awesome and cool for tagline with, uh, with a potential uh, special guest, or we're just not going to do a tagline at all. And we're just going to be like having fun and <laughs> probably going out and 
bar hopping or something. I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned to at Cinefanatics MLB on Twitter to find out what we do. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. <laughs> or the Discord Either. if you're part of our Patreon. You know. Either way, uh, hoping to see if uh, Kevin Smith and uh, Jason Muse pop up at this pop up. So that'll be fun. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, what movies have you watched this past week? <laughs> nah. None. Okay, me neither. Haven't had time. Anyways. Oh, yeah. What's this thing that you're doing on Twitch? Uh, I'm on Twitch. I'm on twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Awesome. That's, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's awesome. Good job. Oh, hey, we just we actually we just got a stream lab uh, from all of the chat saying HTTPS colon slash slash www.twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. So thank you. All of the chat. I appreciate it. All of the chat knows exactly what's up and what's going on. That's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, anyways, um, what movie? Anyone y'all y'all watching us live right now? Any y'all see like any new movies? Anything you would recommend? Um, we're coming off of the Oscar season. We did the Oscars like o- over a week ago, uh, so I have been like more in the mood of like, okay, I just need like some like fun movies, just like movies, just to like just sit there and stare at your screen and just veg out on. So <laughs> anyone. You you don't want to rewatch The Father after Anthony Hopkins won the award? No, 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 no. This is yeah. This is one that I've heard so much about, and I still haven't watched it yet. Nobody. Um, that I that I want to see, just because I do like uh, was it Odenkirk? Mm-hmm. The Judge. Fern says he watched The Judge the other night. Is that the uh, Robert Downey Jr.? Um, I think Robert Duvall. I don't think I've heard of this. Yeah, you have. Let's see if I got it. Oh, okay. It's an older movie. I thought this was like a newer a oh. newer one. Well, it's not older, but... Okay. You say older, huh. I'm thinking like Casablanca. <laughs> well, I mean, older as in it didn't just come out like... like the movie uh, is elderly! Like nobody just recently came out, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh so. that might be kind of cool. He said it was he said it was a damn good movie, so yeah. I heard, I heard things about it. So yeah. Anyways, uh are we ready to move on to some movie news? Move on to some movie news. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some movie news. Over this past week, uh in the realm of rotten tomatoes, uh the movie Citizen Kane, which uh, stood on top of their rating scale at a nice 100%, uh, was recently bumped down due to someone at Rotten Tomatoes finding an old review and adding it to the critics review, I guess. And so therefore, it's no longer at 100%, thus knocking it off of that pedestal and pushing up Paddington 2 as the top highest ranked rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes. They bumped off Citizen Kane. <laughs> For Paddington 2. For Paddington 2. Oh, now, as funny everything. as this sounds. I love everything. As as, as far as as funny as that sounds, uh, those of y'all who are familiar with this channel, you kind of like have an idea of our relationship with Citizen Kane. Uh, we really don't have one. <laughs> yeah. You haven't seen it, and I've seen it, but didn't like it. Our channel is called Cine Fanatics. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's possible. There, there's a lot of really good movies out there that a lot of people like that we just we don't have to like. Look, I'm, uh, just, trying to, I'm just trying to make fun of us before anybody else does for it. Yeah. No, I get it. Uh, <laughs> Citizen Kane, I saw, I've saw. i seen a couple of Orson Welles movies, and the thing with Orson Welles is he's like the the textbook definition of an auteur when it comes to movie making and a lot of his stuff is like way out in left field or right field or whatever political leanings you might have i don't think it's really politics based but it is very existential in a lot of things and i have a very hard time being able to pay attention and follow and 
He's not deep is what he's saying. I'm not deep. He's deep. <laughs> Orson Welles is extremely deep unless he's playing yeah. a giant uh, planet eating transformer. Then I completely can follow all of the stuff that he does. Or he's in a Muppet movie. Or he's in a Muppet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, was it Muppets Take Manhattan or was it the Muppet movie? It was the Muppet movie. Oh, yeah, at the end. Okay, yeah. Yeah, anyways. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of, of Orson Welles' stuff. So uh, maybe I need to give Citizen Kane another shot. It's one of those. There, there's movies, and I'm pretty sure you have some too. There's movies that you watch it the first time. You're like, ugh, this this was a pain to watch. I'm not a huge fan. Just uh, and then you just you just so happen to watch it again. And oh well, sort of. I mean, here's the thing. I didn't like La La Land the first time I saw it, but after thinking about it and then going and seeing it again, I was like, okay, I'm super into this movie, and it's now my favorite movie. So that's that's a unique situation where a movie goes from, eh, I didn't really like the way that went to actually, no, this is my favorite movie ever kind of a thing. So yeah, big, big example <laughs> guys, twitch.tv slash Chris Adams. <laughs> uh, um, I know for me, I did not like the big Lebowski when, when it first, when I first saw it, I was like, this movie's so stupid. There's like no real plot to this. And, and then I watched it again still sober completely sober and i it, i started i started enjoying like the nuances of the movie what they were trying to do with it yeah and then of course you eventually watch it not sober and it's the best movie ever made so uh that's a good example i would say for me uh this no, is- i i do Oops. like the transformers ad, uh, animated movie that's why i was saying yeah. i like when he plays a giant planet eating robot yep this uh, this one right here is going to be more along the lines. Uh, besides the fact that I do need to make time to watch Citizen Kane, and I absolutely 100% will because I run a movie YouTube channel, and even if you don't like Citizen Kane, you need to at least see it. It has been touted as the best film of all time for reasons, I'm guessing. I'll, I will watch it. Uh, but Paddington is such a delight. <laughs> Paddington is just a damn, damn delight. Uh, That's the thing. So, like, I need to watch the Paddington, Paddington movies. What was that? Paddington movies. There you go. Um, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. So here's the thing. The I, human I, torch was denied a bank loan. Exactly. So was Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I really do love the uh, Paddington movies. Uh I laugh. I'm just laughing my head off at this whole thing that Paddington has toppled Citizen Kane on Rotten Tomatoes because Rotten Tomatoes has never let's let's talk about Rotten Tomatoes here. That it's never been like the end all be all for where you need to go to find out if a movie actually is good or not. I love that they put the audience score in there. I think that actually helps out a whole lot. But Rotten Tomatoes has always just been a it's always just been a culmination of. Yeah. <laughs> it's always just been a culmination of how to find a bunch of like reviews and whatnot so that you can get all the different flavors of different people's tastes and, and what have you to help you decide whether or not it might be a film you want to see or not. It's a little but... warm in here or I'm doing a Molly Damon impression. <sighs> right. <laughs> but the fact that there's like so much stink about Citizen Kane isn't the top on Rotten Tomatoes anymore. Get over it. It's fine. It's like it, ma- it makes me laugh. It just it, it, it tells me that if people care that much, they're just taking Rotten Tomatoes too seriously. Which but, is I mean, that was where we got this was a thing. Rotten Tomatoes, your opinion sucks at South by. Because they were, they know Rotten Tomatoes knows not to take themselves too seriously. So, oh yeah, and I mean also, I, 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 I push against back against that just a little bit. They take themselves seriously enough to get uh, excellent talent to host. Your opinion sucks. Like one Mark Ellis, a famous comedian. If you don't know who he is, then you need to look him up. Famous but, comedian and baby carrot, and famous baby carrot. Yes. But other than that, it's actually where we met him the first time. 
But mm-hmm. other than that, uh, yeah, it's I, I I don't take this too seriously. I mean, if anybody is like actually like super mad that oh no, Citizen Kane's been knocked off as the best movie of all time by Paddington, it's like well, people who love cinema, people who love movies are probably going to still hold Citizen Kane in that top tier, regardless of what Rotten Tomatoes says. So, again, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. The rest of us will actually enjoy Paddington over and over and over again, despite the fact that Citizen Kane is so timeless and honored. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, so yeah, moving on from uh, Citizen Kane, uh, mm-hmm. yesterday... Uh, we got what we believed was going to be like the beginning of an entire week devoted to Disney announcing what uh, showing off their wares uh, for this year so far. And we got a nice little sizzle reel of what the MCU phase four is going to be looking like. And it looks really nice. We did a reaction to it. We put it up last night. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out on our channel. And yeah, yeah. what were your like? What would you say your overall thoughts, like takeaways on that? Before we break it down a little bit more. Oh man, my overall thought is I'm just super hyped. I'm super hyped for the MCU. I mean, especially because we're talking about we've been an entire year, like almost, almost a year and a half. When when did Far From Home come out? That was the last MCU movie that we've gotten in a theater. Yeah, that was like that was late, that was late 2019. So it's been like about a year and a half since we've gotten an MCU movie in the theater. Now, obviously, we've just recently gotten WandaVision and, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and that kind of helps that kind of helps wet the palate a little bit, but it does not satiate the hunger for an MCU movie. In which case, we uh got super hyped up from this trailer yesterday, and I'm super excited for what looks like dang near seven movies within a one year time span from when black widow is going to come out to when, uh, Wakanda forever is going to come out. So, yeah, uh, there's going to be a lot of movies that are just going to be cranked out, uh, because of the pandemic has pushed everything. Now we're looking at some cases we're going to end up having like four MCU movies in one year. Yeah. I mean, that's a sin- oh, the, that's this year actually. We're looking at Black Widow, Shang Chi, Eternals, and uh, Spider Man No Way Home all this year. So y- these need to hurry up and get cranked out because there's four of them we got to get through. So, but here's the thing: we talk about it's four of them in one year, but it's actually four of them within the last half of the year. This is like the the quickest turnaround Marvel is doing for movies. Now, taking into consideration all of these movies were done a long time ago and just weren't able to be in theaters, but it's still like one after the other, after the other, after the other for a whole half of a year. This tells me that provided they're actually able to get these things in production, Marvel can crank out some movies as quickly as they, as they need to. Yeah. Uh, There's a thing like, I know like black widow. I'm talking strictly box office. Yeah. Black widow. They were sitting on for quite a while. Uh, Shang-Chi probably not as much but they've been sitting on that one for a little bit um, Eternals I think Eternals wasn't that wasn't that one originally supposed to come out before Shang-Chi yeah yeah that was supposed yeah. to come out like November last year I think yeah yeah so that one they've been sitting on for a while as well and I think the Spider-Man No Way Home is roughly the only one that's still coming out at around the time it was originally planned to come out <laughs> Which actually is nice because that tells me that they are going to stay on track now. From they're, they're getting back onto a onto the right track, essentially. Yeah, I think the only difference is that maybe the Spider Man would have been earlier if they were able to start production earlier. Like mm-hmm. they probably would have started production on Spider Man, I think, sometime last year, rather than like. Well, I don't know when they started them. I think they might have started like right at the end of last year, but they would have been able to start earlier. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, So going through real quick what they showed in that trailer, we got like a lot of clips from the previous Marvel movies. We had a fantastic voiceover by Stan Lee. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we got clips uh, apparently from the Russo brothers on opening night of Endgame. Uh, They were filming the audience reactions during that, which is always, always a blast to watch because 
if any of y'all went to go see Endgame in the theater opening night, y'all know what the reactions were in a crowded theater and how much fun that was being there that night. Um, then they moved on and they showed us like a little bit more of Black Widow, uh, a little bit of Shang Chi. Those we've seen trailers for Black Widow. We've seen a ton of trailers for already. Um, and then they gave us our first glimpse of the Eternals. So we got our first glimpse of like all of them. Um, which let me see. Looking through here, some of these people look a little familiar. Uh, like. Isn't what's his face there on the far right? Wasn't he like a howling commando at one point? I, I don't think so. Is that he's already played two characters within the MCU? Yeah. Well, technically, those two characters are related, but um, yeah. yeah. So we got what Richard Madden, you got Angelina Jolie, uh, Kumal Nanjiani, and then we have, and I forgot her name, Jimmy, Jimmy Chan. Yeah. Uh, who's also already played a character in the MCU. Yeah, that's that's the interesting one here, is that she's actually played a character that had speaking lines within Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And now she's coming back in. Uh, according to, uh, was it was it Feige who said it, that uh, if there was a lead in this movie, it would be her character? Uh, that's a recent quote. Like, he literally j- yeah. just said it. I'm pretty I, sure. I guess that's... I want to say it was was, at it. Yeah. I'm guessing it was okay because she was blue in Captain Marvel. So therefore you're not going to recognize her. Yeah. She'll guess that was, I'm guessing that was the direction they're going. I just love this shot. Angelina Jolie with this like gold shimmering sword. This is awesome. I want to see this scene like more than anything. Yeah. I'm a big me and uh, the teenage version of me back from, when I was a teenager, are huge fans of Angelina Jolie. Uh, by the way, guys, while you're in the middle of a live show, never go back and check the comments of your most recent YouTube video because now I'm sitting here wanting to blast how dumb some of these people are. Uh, oh, that anyway. sounds like fun. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, but moving on from that, uh, <laughs> this this does look interesting because this is a this movie looks like it has a completely different tone. It looks like a darker tone to this movie just based on like the colors, the colors feel like a little bit more muted here. You, you actually mm-hmm. went and looked, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny comment. <laughs> People don't understand sarcasm, do they? No, no they, they don't. don't. They don't. Uh, so, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, uh, Oh yeah. Don't read comments on YouTube. Got it. What I'm saying is that this movie looks a little bit different than some of the movies that came before it within the MCU. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going on with the Eternals. Um, especially because I know, like, I was going to say next to nothing about them, but I know nothing about them. Mm -hmm. I know absolutely nothing about, uh, the Eternals. I just know they're like cosmic, more cosmic stuff in the MCU. They're based on a comic book and that's about all I got. They're part of the MCU. That's what I know about the Eternals. So I'm going into this movie fresh eyes on brand new characters like even guardians of the galaxy i knew a little bit about going into guardians of the galaxy uh here oh god here it goes here just take just just take the eternals are a race of immortal uh alien and their whole like family has split and created most of like the the upper echelon of sentient intelligent life known throughout the galaxy including uh forming what are known as the titans uh the that would be the group of humanoids that had birthed thanos so thanos is connected to the eternals in some form thank you for coming to my ted talk Also, make sure y'all follow twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. I heard it's a really good Twitch channel. <laughs> Throw that up there while you're in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, some of them have been Avengers, like there's Cersei, who's an Avenger at one point. Yeah. So. So we got Vernon with the $2 super chat. Before Be- new Marvel product, Chris Adams MLP on that site. <laughs> I get it. I don't. I don't get it. 
<laughs> but thank you anyway for the for the two dollars, Vernon. I appreciate it. Anyway, so yeah, uh, what else? What else did they show? They showed uh, Eternal stuff. <laughs> we did misunderstand Stately. Yeah. <laughs> did he I mean, say I Stately? Could, yeah, they, they wrote Stately. Like, okay, <laughs> that's hilarious. Anyway, you're gonna before we get too off the rails on right. that. <laughs> yeah, before we get too off the rails on that. Uh, so they showed Eternals footage. They didn't show us. They didn't show us um, any other kind of like footage other than say like uh, Shang Chi and, and Black Widow, which we've already gotten footage from those movies. Eternals was brand new, but they did mm-hmm. give us two new titles that we didn't know about yet, which was yeah, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, which I really, I, I do actually like this. Uh, Mm -hmm. because it it feels so honoring in in many different ways. It's, it's honoring to uh, Chadwick Boseman and having come before playing T'Challa. And it's honoring to the idea that uh, Feige was saying that they're not really going to focus on say black Panther in this movie, but rather the whole country of Wakanda and I guess what Wakanda now means to the world. So I'm actually really intrigued by that because I mean, one, there's a side of I would love to see the the further continuation of the character of Black Panther because he's just a really fantastic character anyway. But I also think that you're still going to see the mantle passed along in some capacity. I know they're not recasting him. Uh, I don't know if they plan on giving him like an, an honorable send off in some capacity in the movie, say like. Uh, he passes away in some in some way, and they give honor to the character of T'Challa. That feels it would feel rough, I know, because it's like a little too soon, a little too close to Chadwick Boseman's actual passing. But they're they're going to have to do something with the character of Black Panther, and I imagine that title is just going to get passed on to say Shuri or maybe you know even one of the Dora Milaje. I don't know if they find a way for one of them to somehow step up and take on that mantle, despite not being actually part of the Royal family. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Either way, you know, they're going to do something there. And that, that title I think shows that there's a different direction for this beyond uh, just being black Panther too, which I wonder if they would. Maybe he married storm. (laughs) Like in in between movies, he married storm and then uh, like, I guess passed away and now storm is also the new black Panther. I don't know. <laughs> that might be I don't know if that would work out. I don't know. No, they were like, no, oh, that's a little too strange. Y'all went a little too far too quick. That's but, a little, yeah, that's that. that I don't think that's going to work, but anyways, uh, that's one, that's a conversation I'm eager to have as we get more and more like what's actually happening story wise, because I know that that's going to be a huge topic uh, as to what's going to happen with Black Panther? Who's the new Black Panther? What are we doing with this movie type of thing? Uh, the other one, this one was really interesting, is they changed the name of Captain Marvel 2 to the Marvels. Um, this is really interesting that they did this. And I don't know, like, going back to, if you remember uh, when Man of Steel came out for DC... Then they did Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, and a lot of people were like, "Okay, well, this is the the new title for Man of Steel 2. Like, no, they actually still could make a Man of Steel two, and it would be a part of the Man of Steel, yeah, thing of movies. <laughs> this is this actually going to be Captain Marvel two, or is this a whole nother like string of movies that Captain Marvel is just going to be a part of also?" Uh, I would say it's Captain Marvel too. I mean, you look at how the MCU has been structured so far. Everything's been pretty linear. Uh, there's been, you know, they don't necessarily always go with a, a sequel number in each of the titles. Unless you're talking about like Iron Man, you have Iron Man two, Iron Man three, but for the most part, each, each character has their own franchise. So their own franchise follows as of right now, up until of course, Thor, you know, well, actually, I would say Avengers and then Thor. Everything's been a a trilogy with each character. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is Captain Marvel, too. This is going to still strongly and mainly feature uh, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. 
her Carol Danvers in this movie. And then of course you'll have, you'll just have the addition of uh, Tayona Paris as, as Photon and uh, Iman as, as uh, Miss Marvel. So uh, speaking of her, Speaking of her, we did get a, a leaked photo happen to spring up of Iman as Miss Marvel uh, in the costume. And it's funny, like, so th- I saw this get leaked, and I've seen both love and hate online for this costume, saying that it, like, at some points they're saying that it doesn't look like it's a homemade costume. It doesn't look like she could potentially uh, make this herself. Kind of like the you see the comic book version here, I mm-hmm. guess could feasibly be more realistic to being homemade. But then other people saying it just it just does not work. You this isn't a costume that translates to live action. I don't see that as an issue here. Yeah, like, I this, think this costume looks good. That's definitely. I feel like that's definitely an incorrect statement. I mean, especially the looks, skater sneakers. <laughs> exactly. This looks like a costume that, you know, if it if it looks at least a little bit campy in any way, in terms of the translation from comic to screen, then it's because there's a teenage girl who has decided to become a superhero and has decided I'm going to make my own superhero costume. She's going to make probably a slightly over the top costume because she's a teenager who wants to be a superhero and has superpowers. Let me make a superhero costume. Uh, so I think that's the situation you see there. And I think that's why it's actually going to translate well to screen because one, uh, people are still judging this based off of a photo that somebody took from a distance on a movie set, which don't do that. Uh, somebody took that photo from a distance. They're seeing it. Uh, in still in a still frame, we're not seeing it in motion. We're not seeing her. We're not seeing anything about her character, how she's going to act. There's just so many different factors that pull together, you know, these costumes from from their translation from comic panel to screen, and being able to just make a judgment from a, a singular still photo is not is not enough. You need you need a lot of these other factors in order to make that sound judgment. Yeah, so Rachel here in the chat is saying where it came from uh, because uh, the character of Miss Marvel, uh, Camilla Khan, and I was yeah. like, I can't pull her name. Camilla Khan is like the first, I guess, the first Pakistani superhero in Marvel, mm-hmm. I believe. I, so, I want to say she's probably the first Pakistani superhero, like in general, or at least at least coming from like American comics, anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah so i mean it, it makes sense that this uh, this she's basically wearing traditional traditional outfit it's just decorated as, as if a it was a superhero costume but that's kind of yeah, that's really interesting you can even see a lot of it like around her collar if you like look at the actual like photo of her on set you can see you can see it around the collar i i saw that immediately i was like that looks that does look like a traditional uh outfit worn in that culture so that's uh that I think that's actually a really cool touch to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the com well, I mean, look at the comic book version here. She kind of has that around the collar mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, yeah. I, think I, it's think, a, I think it's I think it's a great translation. I think it looks great. I, I think it is too. And here's the thing: this is opening up that conversation going back to uh, going as far back as the original X Men movie, uh, where Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was joking about going out in this black leather costume and Cyclops is like, well, what do you expect? Yellow spandex. They yes, could now, they could do Wolverine's <laughs> costume. They could, they could appropriately do Wolverine's co- comic book costume in the movies and it would work. Uh, there's that deleted scene from the Wolverine where he opens up that suitcase and you see the, the original yellow and Brown costume that he had. And it looked fantastic. And we're like, put it on. But yeah. he doesn't put it on. They don't even put that scene in the actual movie. It's a deleted scene. So, or I would even point to the end of Age of Apocalypse, where where the uh, the X Men team that are in that are wearing more comic accurate X Men attire. Like yeah. Cyclops has the blue with like the yellow belt and what mm-hmm. have you, and the yellow visor. Uh, Nightcrawler you know. is in a black and red costume. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're, they're, they're aiming at more at comic accurate. I think audiences now are a lot more forgiving in terms of how these costumes look because they know the origination source is comic books. We're all on board now, especially with what MCU has worked so hard at doing, which mm-hmm. is making, making this very fantastical world of comic books, such a reality that yeah. now we can foresee people who are superheroes in real life, dressing up like this and actually being a superhero. Well, I like I compare it to uh, say movies or TV shows where there's like a plethora of superheroes. Say like uh, Invincible, the Invincible cartoon that's out, or uh, even the uh, Kickass movies. Both of those had like a ton of superheroes all over the place, and it's usually a bunch of people wearing homemade costumes that all look really eh, kind of just. Eh. I mean, Invincible, at least that one's animated, so it's kind of hard to tell how much of their costumes look like it's professionally done, which that is a story plot of that comic and cartoon. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no uh, by the way, by the way, if y'all haven't seen the Invincible cartoon, it's really good, but whoo, that finale. Whew. It's very <sighs> violent. It's extremely violent. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyways, uh, I, I I did like the cartoon though. I thought that they did a really good job with that. Anyways, there was a mini review in this, I guess. Uh, anyways, going back to Marvel, uh, that whole like phase four thing, and I love the it ended with the Marvel Studios logo with the Fantastic Four, the fan not the Fantastic Five, the Fantastic Four logo behind, uh, in which they're they're basically still acknowledging, hey. We're They're coming. On. We're going to do Fantastic Four, and it's going to be done right. We're, in fact, it's going to be done so right. We have no problem with ta- with showing this logo over and over again throughout all of our promos and everything. We're going to get Fantastic Four done properly. But it sounds like right now we're expecting what Fantastic Four. They didn't give a date on that one. They're, we're expecting mm-hmm. it though, probably around the 2023 time period. Because that's uh, when- hopefully 2024. Please no. Like here's the thing, I get it, and it's it's, it's cute and it's funny, but I want that movie quick. I, I do too. Just because it's been so long since we've had a good Fantastic Four movie. It, always, we've never had a good Fantastic Four movie. I, I could kind of argue that the 2005 was at least watchable. It was watchable. I didn't like uh, Jessica Alba as Susan Storm, but it was a watchable movie. They did some good things. They did some bad things. Put it yeah. all together, and there you have the facts of life. Um, I mean, there's there's even parts of uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer that I really enjoyed. Like Silver Surfer. Like the Silver Surfer, for the most part. Yeah. Th- yeah. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> so The Fantastic Car off- looked cool. Not to get too off track. Uh, I'm very excited for the MCU Fantastic Four. I think based on what we've seen in the MCU, there's no reason to not trust that it's going to be just leaps and bounds better than anything we've seen Fantastic Four before. And I'm excited for it. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for Marvel talk. Let's uh, let's get into the fact that today is May the 4th. And uh, with it being May the 4th, the one thing I just want to, I, I want to highlight real quick before we do anything else. Uh, where is it? I'm trying to find someone said it earlier and I just want to make sure we get this out there. Oh, there it is. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Make sure y'all follow and sub to that. Uh, that would be great. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some star Wars. Um, so today is star Wars day and I was really hoping for some, uh, some huge star Wars announcement and it's probably going on right now as we're talking and not reading the internet. It'd be hilarious, uh, so, actually. Yeah, y'all let us know if there's some big news thing. We got to stop all of a sudden and start talking about this real quick before I have to hop over to another channel and talk about Halloween 3. Um, but yeah, uh, there was no huge announcement other than the they finally made a lightsaber that... You, oh, hold on. Yeah, you say there's no huge them? announcement, but uh, like a real-ish working lightsaber? No, no, pretty, I get, I, I get that. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I saw the video. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. The way, I mean, all we've had so far as far as like realistic lightsabers are either it's a glass tube that uh, that like screws into the lightsaber hilt or you had those, uh, the plastic toy ones that had the the parts that would just expand. So they yeah. would slide into one another and then that, that whole thing would slide into the, the lightsaber hilt. 
Which I have one of those somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. Yeah, I never had one of those, but whatever. I always looked at it and go, no, I want a real lightsaber. I'm gonna put it right on I'm gonna hang it on the wall right next to my real uh hoverboard from Back to the Future 2, <laughs> which they never came out with that either. Well, there two you go. Things, so, two things that uh, should have been released. Yeah. So here we go. I am trying to give us an update real quick before we actually dive into any Star Wars talk to see if there is any Star Wars news happening. And uh, I was able to pull up that there are multiple people talking about this on Twitter. Um, that there's no Star Wars news. So okay. <laughs> let's talk about some Star Wars without um, new news. First thing I got to do real quick. It is extremely hot in here. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is his new chair that he got after I tackled him last time and broke it. Uh, check out the chair. It is I, I like to call it the executive. That's what they like to call it. That's how it was written on the box when it shipped. But it is, it's so comfy and plush. Wait, it's so wait, soft. Was it, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's called. I've just been calling it that as a joke. Is that what they actually call it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well there you go the executive <laughs> anyways uh so one of the things I, I like i wanted to talk about real quick as far as star wars goes and this seems to be something i see a lot of people like bring up i'm kind of curious as to, uh, we'll have to do this like kind of quick i don't want to be like sitting here just elaborating on this all night but uh what are your thoughts as to what movies Knowing uh, those of y'all in the chat, please feel free to to pitch in on this. What movies do you think of? Do you know of based on what is currently canon in the Star Wars universe? What movies would you like to see that haven't been done yet? Say either before the prequels, between the prequels and the original trilogy, between the original trilogy and the sequels, and after the sequels. What would you like to see them make a movie of in? based off of what you know about Star Wars. Now, you mentioned movie, but I will also add to it TV show. Sure, whatever. What what do you want to see filmed in the Star Wars or animated? What do you want to see filmed or drawn or computer animated or claymation? Hell, let's just throw all the animation out. <laughs> Look, we're just not talking about books and comics and video games, okay? We're talking about the medium of television and movie. You know, let's even go so far as like you want to see someone put their action figures together and robot chicken something, then what do you want to see? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we definitely need to see another Blue Harvest for sure. That was Family Guy. I know. Okay. I'm aware of that. Uh, no, uh, here, here's the thing. <laughs> That's actually kind of a joke, but I, I am serious. I want to see a lot of these like updated parodies. Uh, cover those real quick. I want to see the the sequel to Spaceballs. I want to see. Give me another robot chicken, another Family Guy. Give me another. Uh, oh, was it Thumb Wars? There's supposed to be like there was supposed to be oh, another cool Thumb Wars Lord. that was happening. Man, the that Bob, thing was so Bob dumb. Oden, Bob Odenkirk's uh, Thumb movies. Bob. Steve. Steve, Steve. Odenkirk. Sorry. Yeah, Steve Odenkirk, not Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. Uh, so Steve Odenkirk, who also did uh, Kung Pao: Enter the Fist. Yeah, he did a he did a bunch of like direct to video movies of like thumbs with like little faces. They're disturbing to look at. It's just absolutely disturbing. He put like uh, real eyes and a mouth on a thumb, and just yeah, it's funny uh, though. <laughs> they're they're really dumb, but they're really funny. Uh, yeah. So there, I keep looking on IMDb. There's supposed to be another one coming out, but. I I don't know if it's if it just got lost in development hell or something, but either way, well, uh, you know what they, you, you know when a good time to announce that would have been <laughs> today, today, exactly. Yeah, I had a or whole tomorrow. year. Guess what? You've got another year till the next May the Fourth. Get to work on these people. Tomorrow would be good too. You can do. Uh, oh, we Reven were claiming Re fifth. Revenge of the Fifth. Yeah, um, but. Uh, actual Star Wars stuff. I mean, so here's the thing. I know there's a lot of people out there talking about that they want a sequel to Solo. I don't. Um, 
But here's the thing. Star Wars is Star Wars. Like, as much as I dislike Solo, and it literally is my least favorite Star Wars movie, I'll even put the Clone Wars movie above Solo. I don't technically rank that one in my list of Star Wars movies, but it is a Star Wars movie. I put the Ewoks movies before Solo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I put the, Solo, ho- the holiday special before Solo. <laughs> in a vacuum, Solo is a fine movie. It's... It's a, just a nice little adventure flick. It's enjoyable, but in... <laughs> oh, we lost viewers. Apparently people love Solo too much. Sorry, guys. I don't like Solo. Either way, come uh, back. We promise we won't talk about The Last Jedi. <laughs> well, <laughs> so guess what's right above Solo? Um, yeah. The thing is, is uh, Solo for me is... it's. I don't, I'm not as big a fan of it, but it is Star Wars just like The Last Jedi. It's all Star Wars. It's all canon. You can not like it all you want. It's canon. It's part of the story. Accept it. So that's that's where I fall with Solo. If they make a Solo sequel, I'm probably not going to be thrilled about it, but I probably will still go see it. I think we're still going to watch it, but... Yeah. I, I Honestly, I'll still go to the theater to see it because as far as I'm concerned, it's a new movie. It's a separate movie from the first Solo. And like a lot of movies... Sometimes the sequel is actually better than the original. So I am I will always give these movies a fair shake. I'm just not a big fan of Solo. The, obviously the first one, the only one that's out there right now. But yeah. What, what movies do you are out there that you feel like you want to see? I mean, what stories need to be told based on? I want to see, I want to see a prequel to the prequel. Uh, which I believe, like, what is that? Was that in line with like Knights of the Old Republic? We're yeah, I mean, we're somewhat we're somewhat exploring that that region here pretty soon. I want to see something like that. I want to see this whole thing about uh, Darth Plagueis, which I'm guessing was the the Sith Lord who trained Palpatine. So. Yeah. I want to see that story. I want to see the beginnings of the Sith. I want to see the beginnings of the Jedi. Uh, who was it who, uh, d- uh, like, one day just sat there and said, you know what? I feel like I could. I'm doing that with my mind and not with my other hand that you can't see that's off screen. Like, who who did this <laughs> stuff and, like, realized they could control things around them? And Well, you know, it's fascinating, and I'll actually do this slight plug uh not even uh not even to be expected but uh our good friends over at star wars explained alex and molly damon they like to do an annual the entire star wars canon as we know it up till now where he does a where alex does a quick run through of the beginning of known star wars timeline that is canon not we're not counting like legends and all that like books and everything that are now yeah you know not counted by Disney uh, beginning of Star Wars timeline to where we're currently at in the Star Wars universe and somewhere your cat Lola falls in this say hi everybody hi Lola she wanted to make an appearance um, so that he does start with where the origination of the force actually comes from. I mean, we're talking like super like beginnings of star Wars universe. So that's over. That is actually over on the star Wars explained channel. He does. He has that. He does it annually every year updates it with new information based on where star Wars canon is, you know, in a given time. So that's actually something if you have an hour to go check out, there's, there's a video that's an hour long for you to check out, but uh, yes, we are getting into, uh, I believe it's called the High Republic, which mm-hmm. is the the heightened time of the Jedi when they were uh, literally at the height of their powers. I'm repeating that phrase or that word, but uh, we're talking about a time frame which I believe prior to the Disney takeover was like years and years and years and years and years. But now is just back when Yoda was uh, a smooth, cool 300 uh, something years old. I pulled that number out. He's definitely younger, but it's like his teenage years right there. Effectively. Yeah. I mean, again, we're looking at Grogu who's like 50. So he's like cruising the streets looking for other Yoda race 
alien <laughs> things. Whatever he is, yeah. I just love that that's the one like alien race out of all of Star Wars lore that we don't know what they're called. Yeah, other well, than up, like, other than until, someone trying to call them tridactyls or something like that. Yeah, because I mean, up until Phantom Menace, uh, Yoda was the only one of his species, and then of course we were introduced to Yaddle. Yaddle. And, yeah, Yaddle, and then we got uh, Grogu and Mandalorian. But uh, so yeah, we we are going to be exploring the High Republic here pretty soon. I know I know they already have uh, they already have books and stuff out there. But I believe we're going to be like diving into movies at some point, which would be really interesting, or at least a TV show or something in that in that realm. And I think that's that's an area that I'd be really interested in seeing explored because I would love to see the Jedi at the height of their power, the Sith at the height of theirs when there were more than just two Sith, when there was more than just the rule of two that was mm-hmm. established. That I think is would be a very interesting, interesting thing to see. And I know that's we're diving back even closer to like Knights of the Old Republic and all that. So what potentially would, uh, and this is the one I'm probably not going to think of anything too much. You'll probably be more familiar with this than I am, but what storylines do you want to see that potentially take place like before the original trilogy and directly after the original trilogy? I mean, I think before the original trilogy, I, before the original trilogy, we're, we're doing a whole lot of uh, exploration. Th- and, th- thanks, thanks, Jake. Thank uh, Twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP is a great place to go check out me playing games on Twitch, and you can support me over there, and that'd be really cool. But before the original trilogy, uh, you know, we all obviously we already have the the prequel movies. We've we've gotten a lot of stuff in that in that realm already. We obviously we've had uh, Solo, we've had Rogue One, kind of explore a lot of that. Uh, what I think is, is really cool though, is, uh, this show that they just introduced bad batch, which I'll be breaking down on Friday, but, uh, we don't need to pull. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Episode one, three, we- four breakdown this coming Friday with Adam Witt. We actually need to redo that because it would just be a two episode breakdown, but Hey, I'll, uh, I didn't notice that earlier. I'll talk to you about it off, off camera. Uh, I thought one through four was going to be out by Friday. I will talk to you about it off camera. There's only two episodes. Um, okay. So, yeah, the that that's actually happening within an interesting pocket of the universe where we are f- figuring out what happened right after uh, Order sixty six, and that's that's something that I think is is very interesting, especially from the perspective of like the clone army to switching over to uh, recruiting soldiers for the army of the, or the, uh, the, the Imperial army for the empire mm-hmm. and all that. So I think that's, that's going to be an interesting pocket to explore, but I think we're, we're kind of uh, running out of like time post uh, revenge of the Sith and pre a new hope. We're going to get a little bit more with Obi-Wan, the Obi-Wan show coming out kind of what was Obi-Wan up to prior to a new hope. But other than that, Hello there. Yeah. Other than that, unless we're like making up a completely new character, kind of like we did with the Bad Batch, but if we're making up new characters and what have they been up to and what were they doing, where you know, we're 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 going to run out of like stories to tell pre pre original trilogy. I think for me, what I am more interested in seeing, and what they would probably have to do animated now based on Mark Hamill's age, is that. Uh, we would see Luke trying to rebuild the Jedi Order post Return of the Jedi and pre uh, pre Force Awakens. So what happened in that thirty year time span? Obviously, we got a taste of it with the Mandalorian, but you know what else happened during that time period? That's actually what I would like to see, and they probably would do good making an animated show out of that. Hmm. Like in the same style that they've been doing, like Clone Wars, Bad Batch. Just keep yeah. it all in that same kind of computer generated. Yeah, like I know they did. Uh, they did Resistance, uh, which I haven't. I haven't watched any of Resistance, but that show exists within, I believe, like the time period of the Force Awakens and all that, or like I think maybe right before. Um, doesn't part of, part of Rebels takes place in that time frame also, doesn't it? 
undecided uh part of the very end of rebels not to get too spoilery guys but there's like a last shot type situation which is undisclosed as to when it takes place uh it could take place post return of the jedi uh it remains to be seen because a lot of what they introduced in mandalorian with with ahsoka could still lead to a, a rebels like sequel series of some sort which could end up just being the ahsoka series that's going to be coming out so yeah. Either way, I think there's a lot of room to explore stuff between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens that I think actually might help enhance the viewing of the sequel trilogy for all those like myself who are kind of eh, on the entire sequel trilogy as a whole. I think that could that could that could really help. It could really uh I know I, I say this, there's a lot of people out there who don't like the character direction of Luke Skywalker, and I get that 100%. I wish that they had taken him in a different direction than they did too. But I think a, a series that leads up to that would go a long way to help alleviate some of that, some of that uh, concern about, I say concern about where they took Luke's character in, in the sequel series. I think that could be, it could be really cool to explore his like emotions. How did he feel? Why did he run off to Octo? Octo, however you pronounce bless, that. Bless you. Why'd he run off to Scotland? Um, it's somewhere off of there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a lot, lot of cool stuff there. But then also, and yeah, I'm commandeering like this entire thing here. Uh, give us give us more stuff later on. Like I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing a series or some follow-ups to, you know, what does Ray do post Rise of Skywalker? That's what I want to see. Yeah, I want to. I want. I want that. Uh, I, I want to see out of that. I want to see confirmation that Finn is going to be trained to be a Jedi because apparently mm-hmm. he's got that ability. I also want to know what's up with that little kid with the broom at the end of the Last Jedi. We got nothing out of him. They teased this kid could use the Force to move a broom, and nothing. Like you can't tease me like that. <laughs> he was if a representative. Of like a larger galaxy of kids and and other people who have force abilities. I want that show, and I want Broom Kid to be like the leader of like all of this. I want him to be like the uh, the the Star Wars version of like William Wallace's Braveheart or whatever Braveheart from William. I want him holding up the broom and exclaiming that all the kids are free from whatever that stupid Canto Bite casino thing. Like they're no longer like kids work haven't forced to work there they're all slaves. free and yeah they're i don't want to slaves. say that word i don't like saying that word they're, Anyways, called slaves they're, they're, all, they're, they're all freed and they're all allowed to go be jedi warriors type anakin, thing. Look, anakin was a slave you can say that word it's fine <laughs> anyways moving on that's the movie <laughs> i want to see i want to see the build-up <laughs> of all of that <laughs> yeah there's a lot there's a lot there i mean Give it time. I honestly think, uh, as we so affectionately call him Broom Kid, uh, I believe that kid will actually come back at some point, somewhere, and actually be a character doing something important. Because uh, that's how Star Wars has has worked thus far. And they just have so much room post Rise of Skywalker to do almost anything they want at this point. They left the galaxy so wide open to do whatever they want to do with it that... I would be I would be fascinated uh, by I, 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 I mean at least at least I believe you 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 would expect to see Ray take up where where Luke left off. She would finish mm-hmm. what he started, so to speak. She's like which training is, the next generation, yeah, rebuilding the Jedi Order, bringing it back to power, but also with a new understanding about you know the the Sith ways and and everything that she learned that Luke learned that all the Jedi have learned, you know, in their time. So that's something I would, uh, I would be interested in seeing as well. I think there's a lot of room to do a lot of really cool stuff there. Um, and they have to get creative too, because the empire always struck me as the ultimate evil. And, you know, the fact that they had to bring, I say had to, the fact that they did bring Palpatine back at the end of Rise of Skywalker to me is like, that's because 
we couldn't think of another villain who in this story would top, you know, the idea of Palpatine still being around in some capacity. So that's what would interest me is where does the story go? I mean, Star Wars has always been good versus evil. So what is what is the evil now that the good has to face against? That that is what I would be interested in seeing. Because I expect that Palpatine's done. I would hope so. I need some kind of like security in knowing that there's no way he's going to come back now. And Rise of Skywalker didn't give me that security, but I'm going to trust them that they don't want to bring him back anymore. So what's what's taking his place? Yeah. That I think would be would be very interesting. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyone else in the chat? Do y'all have any ideas? Is there something that y'all know of from Star Wars that we're not mentioning that you want to see like expanded on uh, a story kind of found somewhere in there? Uh, Babu let us Frick, know in the chat. Star Wars story. Babu Freak. I do want the Babu Freak Star Wars. Hey, hey! Yeah. <laughs> it's going to have to be all in subtitles, but I mean, that'd be cool. <laughs> or no, no subtitles at all. And you just like, cause he speaks like a little bit of like, it sounds like some broken English in there with whatever his alien race language is like, just leave it like that. And we're all just going to try to figure out what he's saying. Can I get R2D2 and BB-8 leading a, a show, a, a ragtag group of Babu Frick, Grogu, and a couple porgs and an Ewok. Can I get it? Is this the Star Wars cuties? Like, literally, it's like <laughs> the most adorable characters all going on the most adorable adventures in the Star Wars galaxy. I forgot cuties was a stupid Netflix movie. That's not what I meant by using that term. It's also a small orange. Orange, yeah. But I mean, I just meant like get all the cute characters together and make a, yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to see like, I want to see like the the Babu Frick like uh, rom com. That's what I want. I want a Babu Frick rom com where he's like hey, standing hey, at hey, he's standing hey. at the he's standing at the door with like the cards and stuff, and all the cards are in his language as well. So he's dropping those in front of uh, Kira Knightley, who everyone swears to God looks exactly like Padme, but whatever. <laughs> Sabe, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, to, to me. You're perfect. You're hey hey. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Gordon saying if they brought in the yeah, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't either. That's actually you're taking you're you're bringing up a from books. Yeah, that's that's kind of where my Star Wars knowledge ends because I have not read Star Wars books, so I do not know. I only keep up with like what's movies and tv and then what's brought I, into canon i, I read a, a couple of books like long time ago but they're no longer they're all a part of that that legends thing they're no longer yeah. canon like uh i remember i read shadows of the empire and that was fantastic and i wish they made a movie of that um and then i remember there was like some i guess like young adult books that were made about star wars like uh i remember one of them was uh, I think it was like Jabba the Hutt's mother is trying to get revenge on Leia for killing Jabba, something like that. And it, 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 it was an okay story, but I mean. I would say, uh, I can't remember because back in those times, I think Zizor was, Prince Zizor was one of the characters, I think, in those books, but I can't remember if they made a Zizor canon now or not. Um, not that I know of. I know that they've made Thrawn canon obviously they brought thrawn back and uh put him inside well, rebels let's say shadows of the empire also had uh dash dash rendar and mm -hmm. i don't think dash is canon either so yeah there's a lot of characters like dash like uh mara jade who yeah are supposed to be like luke, offspring of luke skywalker that well mara jade was uh mara jade was his love interest right not his offspring yeah yeah yes <laughs> yes so you are correct, none, of them, none of them have been have been brought back into canon and i think those are characters that a lot of people are like itching to see brought into canon in some way and honestly like there's room for that again wait wait, wait real, real quick did you say twitching to see they're twitching yeah. to see that twitch I mean, I said, it, TV I, slash? I said itching oh. but yes uh follow me on twitch um 
there's there's definitely room within like what I was saying that 30 year time period prior to Force Awakens where maybe I mean maybe that's your explanation Luke uh Luke wanted to be the one to bring the the Jedi order back to back to its you know foundations and stuff but also he was going to take on a lover too and we know like how Jedi rules have been and whatnot and Luke just like his father before him couldn't do it. And so maybe like she dies or something and that just kind of sends him spiraling. And yeah, that was weird story. Maybe that leads to his whole ordeal with like his, his nephew and, and all that. And that's, that's where all that comes from. I don't know. That could be interesting, interesting way to take it, but yeah. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Y'all it's time to start wrapping this episode up. So yep, short, short one tonight. That's because we're uh, he's getting ready to go hop on over on Video Drew's channel, and uh, obviously we didn't have a whole lot of Star Wars news to talk about today, so we wanted to just at least mildly celebrate May the Fourth with you guys. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna call it an early night tonight. Yeah. So hey, uh, <laughs> real quick, let's go back through uh, some stuff that we need to plug again. As he just mentioned. Uh, here in about uh, 40 minutes or so, I'm going to be over on Video Drew's uh, channel. We will be doing Cinema Bias. It's going to be me, myself, Video Drew, and Alex Mack. We'll be covering Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Quite Before possibly my favorite Halloween movie. Because uh, I'm just not a big fan of the Michael Myers character. So that's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Uh, highly, highly underrated movie. So if you're a fan of horror movies this will be a good a, a good conversation to be had over there so uh please join us that'll be a blast um you've got this coming friday uh you're doing i guess bad batch episode one and two breakdown mm-hmm. with adam witt so that'll be coming uh this coming friday um also in case y'all uh haven't heard or anything he's twitching so you can follow him on twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP as he plays Pokemon and whatever other games you could possibly play over there. Currently, I don't know. Currently Pokemon Snap, it just came out. So we're playing a new game that just came out on a new Twitch channel. So come check check that out. We'll be playing through that still for a while before we move on to something else. I don't know. Yeah, trying to hit that affiliate status. So make sure y'all follow, subscribe if you would like. If you enjoy uh, him in his room by himself playing video games. Throw some you're, really, you're, you're making the hard sell here. You're making the real hard <laughs> sell here. Here's the thing. It's, I got about 30 days to get to 50 subs, and I need like another uh, 25, 26, 27, somewhere around there. So uh, That's pretty good so far. If you have multiple accounts on Twitch, give me a follow over there. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's what you're doing. Um, I'm not doing anything else. Other than hitting up this movies pop up next week, that's going to be a blast. So Wait, I'm doing that too. Yeah, sure. yeah that's going to be fun. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I think that's about it. So for the regular plugs, as usual, make sure y'all hop on Patreon.com/slash Cinefanatics. Hop on the tier that is good for you over there. We got movie watch alongs, uh, movie trivia, scrimmage nights coming up. Uh, pretty soon as we get more and more in depth in the first class league that's the movie trivia schmodown's developmental league uh hop on the tier come hang out with us help us study and be prepared for matches that may or may not be coming up soon yeah may, well, may, may or may not be coming. yeah <laughs> may or may not uh even if you hop on the one dollar tier you you have access to our discord uh, we're building a movie loving community over there. Hop on that. Join us on the discord. It's, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, um, we should say that if there is a tagline next week, we will talk about probably what the, uh, watch along and, and the trivia nights and everything coming up are, are going to be, yeah. uh, when they're going to be and what they're going to be. Um, yeah. otherwise stay tuned to the Twitter at Cinefanatics MLP because we'll probably be putting up schedules and and dates and everything that you need to keep in mind coming up there. So again, we'll uh, we'll let you guys know if there's a tagline next week or not before we get into it. It kind of all depends on whether or not we can get the setup right in the living room to have a guest on tagline who's going to be hanging out with us and not virtually. So we'll we'll let you guys know on Twitter if we can get the uh, the equipment working properly for that. So 
Yeah. Anyways, uh, I think that's it. I don't see other comments, no other super chats, stream labs. Don't forget twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. <laughs> you just go get it like tattooed on your arm. So like all you got to do is just like do it across here type of thing. That's just a horrible that. idea. Oh, okay. I would, but that's one of those like where like the founder of Twitch or whatever starts getting indicted for some unspeakable thing. And you're like, ah, I wish I really didn't have this product on my arm anymore. So I'm very leery about what I get like tattooed on me because I don't want that right guys so follow twitch.tv slash chris adams mlb <laughs> yeah anyways uh that's gonna do it for us for tonight on the tagline again come follow me over on the uh, video drew's uh channel uh we could probably put that like in the chat would probably be a pretty cool idea you know because that's how we do things uh in fact i'll just put the video link in there ah uh, because i got it up already <laughs> guys we really, cool. appreciate, we really appreciate each and every one of y'all hanging out here uh Every every single week, all your views just mean the world to us, and just your constant support of us is just is just we're just so grateful because we want to do this. We love doing this. We love talking about this stuff. We love doing all this stuff. So having anybody who's willing to sit down and listen to us, no matter how many, no matter how few, it doesn't matter. Uh, having anybody listening to us kind of go on and on about the stuff that we like to talk about is a big deal. So thank you so much for all of you who are constantly here. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Anyways. So that's going to do it for tonight. So uh, thanks to y'all in the chat for being here tonight. Thank y'all for watching it again. Like you said, it's a huge honor for us. Make sure y'all all, whether you're watching it live or in a replay, make sure you drop us a like. If you're watching on a replay, make sure you comment down below. Let us know what you think of this episode, what your thoughts and feelings, opinions on what we talked about tonight. Let us know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to share this with your friends and family because that's how we grow this channel. Or you also grow the channel by hitting subscribe there's a subscribe button down below please hit that button that will do us a load of good yeah anyways that's gonna do it for tonight y'all so thank again thank y'all for watching as for myself as for my brother thank y'all for watching the tagline we will see y'all again later see ya good night so the Star Wars. That's actually really song. weird. That's really weird how that does kind of fit. But whatever.